I'd like to call the meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville and the City Council sitting as the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, Re Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, and the Victorville Water District. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have anyone wishing to address the Council? Uh, seeing none, we do have closed session items, and I'll turn this over to our City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor McEachern. There are four uh, items listed on the agenda. However, with respect to item number two, we're going to need to continue that because I do not have enough people to uh, take an action on that since you previously always have a conflict of interest with respect to that item. The other two are existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9a. Uh, the titles and the parties and the case numbers are set forth on the agenda. And the third item is uh, anticipated litigation on the 54956.9 and it pertains to an update with respect to the ongoing ACC investigation. To the extent there's any reportable action, we will report that at the conclusion of the closed session. Okay, we'll now move into closed session. Good evening. I'd like to call back to order the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville and the City Council sitting as the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, and the Victorville Water District. At this time, we'll have our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation will be led this evening by Pastor Michael Chandler from Victor Valley Bible Church and Pledge of Allegiance by Victorville Police Lieutenant Leland Bolt. Can you all please stand? Absolutely. Yes. the pastor, I didn't see. Lord, thank you for this day, and especially thank you for this wonderful country of ours. Bless all of our men who are in the armed services serving overseas, especially those special men with their special hearts that have been trained in the SEALs to do those incredible things. Bless each and every one of us as we make decisions in your light and not our selfish end. Amen. Good evening. We have a special uh, proclamation to present this evening. Uh, it is for uh, Victorville Water Awareness, and um, I'd like to have a representative from our Water District come up and receive this proclamation. And perhaps you could talk a little bit about what this is all about. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Dana Armstrong. I'm uh, with the Public Works Department and Water uh, Department, which have recently uh, been combined. Um, so I wear two hats. I'm the Solid Waste Manager, but I also um, am a, and involved in water conservation issues. Uh, the purpose of this proclamation, a number of uh, the California Department of Water Resources and another a number of local uh, water agencies use the month of May to uh, bring attention to our water resources. And the whole point of the proclamation is just to call attention to our water situation, to remind people that water is a limited resource, that we need to use it wisely, preserve it, always use it efficiently, never waste it, 
and to protect our water uh, sources. Uh, in the Victor Valley, we get all of our water. Not in the Victor Valley, in the Victorville Water District, all of our water does come from groundwater. So as the solid waste manager, the other hat that I have is to encourage people to dispose of their their solid waste, their hazardous waste, their motor oils correctly, never to dispose of it on the ground, uh, illegal dumping, because all of that can affect our water quality ultimately. So I don't know if I should read the whole proclamation or just thank you for it. Um, we have two things uh, going on. We're going to have a poster contest for grades K through 6 um, for all the elementary schools in the city of Victorville and within the district. And then we're also going to be encouraging people to call in, as we always do, uh, to get a free water audit from our conservation staff. Um, conservation staff will go out and meet with customers and try and figure out how to save water. We also will provide water-saving devices to uh, qualifying homes. So we hope to have the phones ring off the hook and be very busy during the month of May. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. And I hope we'll have the the poster contest back here before us at some point in the future. Yes, I'm I'm hoping that we will in the month of June. And one other thing, I always forget the one other thing. I do have flyers out in the lobby uh, for anybody who wants information about the um, free water audits, as well as um, all sorts of information about the various free programs that we offer for residents: bulky item pickup, free household hazardous waste disposal, et cetera, et cetera. The programs that are available to our citizens. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And uh, this was not on the program, but uh, over the uh, well, the last uh, Thursday and Friday, we had the city county conference up in Lake Arrowhead, and County Supervisor Brad Metzelthal presented this to our city. This is a replica of uh, extinct Colombian mammoth uh, lower right molar tooth. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> you can take a look at that. This will be displayed somewhere here in City Hall. I'm not sure exactly where. I'll leave that up to our city manager. But uh, this is to commemorate the opening of the Victor Valley uh, Museum actually out in Apple Valley. Uh, as you all may be aware, the County of San Bernardino took over that museum this last year. They completely uh, redid uh, that museum, brought it up to the standards that they have to comply with for accreditation. And so to commemorate that, uh, that was presented to uh, not only our city, but all the mayors of the other cities in the Victor Valley. So I would encourage you all, if you haven't been out to see the museum uh, since it's reopened, please get out there and see it because there's a lot of great uh, displays and uh, exhibits and uh, something to be proud of for the Victor Valley. So please get out and see that. Thank you. Okay, we'll move back into the regular meeting and uh, getting on with this new agenda. It's, it's always, uh, we're trying to make things more efficient, but we always seem to skip over things. So I'll ask our city attorney if we have any announcements out of closed session. Thank you, Mayor McCarthy. There is no reportable action as a result of the closed session this evening. All right, at this point we'll move into public comment. Uh, I do have uh, four different cards here, so we'll go ahead and move into that. Dorothy Miller. You are number one on my list. Hello, Mayor and Council Members. I have a couple things I'd like to mention. Number one is I'd like to find out who's going to pay for the red light cameras attorneys. I don't feel the city of Victorville should have to pay for that. I feel that whoever wants to fight them, go ahead. But City of Victorville should not be paying our attorney to go against the Tea Party or whatever they're going to do. We don't need that. And another thing is we got a uh, website that we need to keep everybody informed with, and that's savevictorville.org. And we need to do that. We need to get on there and see what's on there and see what we can do to save Victorville. 
because it needs to be saved. There's people that's doing things they should not be doing, and we need to keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wayne Winterborn. I'm with the High Desert Community Food Bank, and I just would like to make everyone aware in Victorville of the food drive put on by the uh, letter carriers on May 14th and ask if there's any way we could get the word out into Victorville. We did a test run last year in Apple Valley and uh, we put blue bags out in all the letter, in all the boxes, the post office boxes. Generated 68,000 pounds of food for the high desert only. That's for every community up here. Each community, every Every religious organization partook of it, and they all got an equal share. This year we're hoping to get more because of the situation up here. I want to show you There's some members that went into Los Angeles, and this is a shame because this is how bad things are. This is from Dream. What is that? I don't have my glasses on yet. Uh, let's see. This is from the Dream Center. Normally, they would give out more food than this. This is what they came back with to give their families. A bag of chips, a bottle of water, and some oranges. Now, that's coming out of Los Angeles because Los Angeles is in trouble. And uh, if this is as success, successful this year as last year, we're going to be able to feed a lot of families up here. So I don't have to tell you folks how bad things are with everyone losing their jobs and their homes. So I'm just asking for a little support, if you can give it our, our high desert support and get the word out. We would appreciate it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Raymond Herrera. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Good evening, Rudy. Um, I'd like to speak tonight on the um, May 5th celebration that's going to be held at the college Saturday. Uh, there's many different layers to it. But um, first of all, I feel that, uh, like the Political Fair Practices Commission, that there has been some collusion and some corruption when it comes to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Rudy Garbiales and his wife, who uh, draws a salary and also commission on the sponsorships. I've always questioned whether the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce puts that money that they uh, solicit from the people to get use. I've never heard of a scholarship being awarded, and if so, are they awarded to Americans as well as Hispanic students. Part of the sponsorships for this event are, an organiz are organizations that sponsor illegal aliens in their plight for financial aid at schools such as Victor Valley College. And like I said, Rudy's very well aware that some of these people that are coming to sponsor are sponsoring criminal elements in our society, be it that they're students or, you know, sons and daughters of illegal aliens to attend our college. I think that that's unfair. I think that it should not be discriminatory. It should be for all Americans, not just Hispanic. The word Hispanic and Latino, I do not believe in those words. They're racist phrases and words. They're false. Falsehoods such as uh, Cesar Chavez. You know, he's a falsehood to all Americans of Mexican descent, as is Cinco de Mayo. These people and these um, events are not celebrated in Mexico. I am an American, proudly so, and even more so of Mexican descent. And there's no measuring stick for Americans of Mex Mexican descent to come from Mexico to tell me how to celebrate my ethnicity. Furthermore, America has one ethnicity, that is American ethnicity. The color of our skin is American. Getting back to the sponsorships. Um, are these concession stands, people selling alcohol or food, are they paying a tax to the city? I mean, the city of Victorville is broke. Who's being held accountable for the taxes that are being 
going to be raised out of this event? And where is this money going, you know, that's going to be raised at this event? And how corrupt is this event? And should it not be an American Chamber of Commerce to represent weak people? Robin Hedson. Um, good evening. Um, I, too, am here to talk about the event Mr. Herrera mentioned. It's the Cinco de Mayo event this Saturday at Victor Valley College. We are going to stage, along with some other Americans during this event, an American flag rally. I've got information here, if anyone's interested. Uh, we'll be in front of the college, just with the American flags, uh, because we feel like this event is racist and divisive. We're the United States of America, and we feel like staging an event for a Mexican holiday does not contribute to our country, to our American way. And that's why we're going to be there, just to bring awareness. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from the flyer we're handing out. Cinco de Mayo Festival at Victor Valley College. Now, Victor Valley College is a taxpayer-funded community college. Why are they hosting a Mexican holiday event? So this same day, we will be there to celebrate America. We're going to hold an American flag rally on the sidewalk in front of Victor Valley College. We're, going to, we're asking people to stand up and rally on behalf of our American culture, our American way of life, our American posterity. On the back of our flyer, we've um, put some information from a Spanish-speaking uh, radio station that is one of the sponsors. And um, we discovered, as we analyzed this, that the um, High Desert Hispanic Chamber of Commerce stands to take in thousands of dollars. We've listed here on the back of the flyer the cost of some of the sponsors. For example, um, the partner sponsor pays $5,000, and um, there's all sorts of uh, uh, money that would be collected that day. And we do not feel like a taxpayer-funded community college should be used for um, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce to collect funds. So. Um, that's why we'll be there that day, and if anybody, anybody's interested, here's our flyer, and I'll also be leaving one for each of the city council members. Thank you. I, you know, I generally don't respond to this sort of nonsense, and you people ought to get a life and get a job somewhere. You have no idea what being an American is. I do. Um, but if you go inside the, uh, the college on that day, you will see the American flag flying high from the ladders of the fire trucks. So I invite you to don't stand outside. Come inside and celebrate with us the American way. Okay, at this time I have uh, no other public comment cards. Anyone else wishing to address the council at this time? All right, at, the, at that point, uh, forgive me, I, we do have a new agenda order, so I'm going to ask our city clerk to present the agenda to the council. It's, it's a, a new way of doing things. Um, and at this time, I'd ask her to do that. I probably should have had her do that before public comment. Thank you, Mayor McEachern. Uh First of all, uh, Council Member Baez asked that an announcement be made that the reason she is not at the meeting tonight is because she is home recovering from surgery. The City Council of the City of Victorville welcomes the public's participation in tonight's meeting. It is requested that all present please silence cell phones, pagers, and other electronic devices and that personal conversations be kept to a minimum during the conduct of the meeting. Persons who wish to address the council on a specific item which appears on the agenda are requested to complete one of the white speaker cards that have been placed on the agenda table in the council chamber's lobby and give it to the city clerk for the record prior to consideration of the item. The mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card when the item comes up for discussion by the city council. The public comment period is the time and place for the general public to address the City Council on any item within their jurisdiction that is not on the agenda. It is requested that a speaker card also be submitted to the City Clerk for anyone who wishes to address the City Council during the public comment period. 
Pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.3, state law prohibits the Council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The Council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per speaker or less as deemed necessary by the Mayor, depending upon the number of individuals desiring to speak. All communications are to be addressed directly to the Mayor. Individual comments to Council members, staff, or members of the audience are not permitted. Individuals who fail to adhere to these guidelines may be asked to yield the floor. Any individual or group who engages in disruptive conduct during the meeting will be removed from the chambers by order of the Mayor. Disruptive conduct includes, but is not limited to, addressing the Council without being recognized, not addressing the subject before the Council, repetitiously addressing the same subject, failing to relinquish the podium when requested to do so, verbal outbursts or comments from the audience. Thank you for your cooperation and adherence to these rules. All documents to be considered for approval at this meeting are before the Council. Following are the revisions that have been submitted for tonight's agenda. There are two revisions to the City Council agenda. The first one is public hearing item number 13. Due to a lack of uh, quorum being able to participate on, on this item. It is requested that this item be continued to May 17th. The public hearing will be opened, any testimony taken, and then continued to May 17th. Second revision is to written communications item number 19. Council Member Baez has submitted a request that this item be continued for a period of 30 days. And those are all the revisions. All right, thank you. And in keeping with the fact that this is a professional business meeting, uh, these are some of the changes that we are making to how this agenda will be presented in the future. And uh, so I would ask uh, for the respect of the public, of this council, uh, that if you do have uh, comments to be made, that they be made to me and not to individual council members. Uh, you can take out whatever you want on me, but not on this council. Um, that's the reason I'm in this chair, so that's what you can do. All right, moving on, uh, we do not have any items for the Library Board of Trustees or the Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Redevelopment Agency, or the Joint Powers Financing Authority. We do have uh, a couple of items for the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority. And we'll move on to agenda item number eight. This is a request to approve change order to existing Vance Corporation contract in the amount of 125000 Move for approval. Motion by Councilmember Rothschild, second by Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Vias absent. Agenda item number nine is an update on the EB-5 program and status of the appeal to the USCIS. Mr. Metzler. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I think you know fairly well enough uh, what the program is in the background, so I thought maybe I'd start uh, just with a little bit of chronology of events to kind of take us to where we're at today. Um, you, you all know that uh, we've been involved through the uh, RCVD, which is the city's nonprofit. Keith, I can hear you, but would you put that up closer because the microphone isn't back there. I don't know. <coughs> How's that? Testing. Uh, the city's been involved with the uh, EB-5 program uh, through its nonprofit dating back to January 15, 2009, and that's when the uh, city uh, had submitted its official application to the USCIS for consideration of a regional center designation, which generally encompasses the boundaries of the entire city of Victorville. It was in June of 2009 that the actual award by the USCIS occurred, and uh, since that date, uh, the city, through its nonprofit, has been uh, pursuing in partnership with a limited partner uh, to uh, raise funds for capital investment projects benefiting the Southern California Logistics Airport. Um, from then, it wasn't until May 4th of 2010 uh, when issues started uh, becoming um, 
uh, of concern to the USCIS where they then issued its first notice of intent to terminate. Uh, it had issued that notice of intent giving an opportunity uh, to respond uh, to a number of questions and that really kind of signaled um, the longstanding exercise that we've been going through as staff with USCIS to justify the validity um, of, of the uh, regional center program here in Victorville. Probably most significant was in uh, October of 2010 when the USCIS, when the USCIS issued its uh, notice of final termination um, and that final termination then was shortly thereafter applied for a motion to reconsider by uh, the city and uh, the RCVD in November of uh, 2010. Surprisingly, in December, uh, December 14th of 2010, uh, the USCIS actually uh, had considered the motion to reconsider filed by the RCVD and actually granted an opportunity uh, for the RCVD to provide additional information. The information uh, requested as a part of that reconsideration was a very substantive, very substantial, uh, substantially natured uh, uh, request for information and largely focused upon um, asking the city to prove that it actually had spent monies, issued contracts, and that the project identified as the uh, wastewater treatment plant was actually being built. Uh, so then um, on March 7th, 2011, uh, staff had actually finalized its response. It was a very voluminous response. It was two boxes full of documentation, 8,115 pages of actual contracts, invoices, checks, uh, check requests, everything associated with uh, the payment to uh, contractors to actually build and complete that wastewater treatment plant. Uh, staff in submitting that response believes that that response is uh, very thorough um, and answering all of the questions uh, that have been raised by the USCIS. Um, since having submitted that response to the USCIS, we haven't received anything official until just last week, April 28th, where we did request a status update uh, as to the examination of our response. Uh, the response that we had got back uh, electronically was that our application is with an officer undergoing secondary adjudication review. Uh, so that's as much as we know uh, as to where we're at specifically in the review process, and that is that they're still reviewing it. Uh, I have to admit that if I was the one responsible for having to review everything that we submitted, um, it certainly would take uh, quite some time. Uh, but we do believe it's responsive. Um, maybe just to further update beyond that, uh, to date staff has pr uh, processed three reimbursement requests associated with funds that have been originally invested with the airport authority. Uh, three reimbursement requests have um, actually been granted, uh, leaving us with an outstanding uh, balance of loan proceeds uh, to the tune of $6 million. Um, and that is uh, the update that I have for you this evening. There's no uh, there's no time period or, or anything in the process that we're aware of. Whatever it takes, it's sit here and wait for, for as long as it takes. Yeah, yes, it really uh, seems that we're uh, at their mercy. I do know firsthand that uh, just the regional center programs uh, that are offered by the USCIS have become increasingly popular. And I do know, um, just in talking with people in the industry, that there's an increasing volume of applications uh, to be considered as a regional center um, throughout the entire United States. Um, as uh, we have a regional office that we're dealing with, I do know that out of the region, uh, there's also a significant amount that they're uh, reviewing. So their volume, their workload has um, increased uh, fairly significantly. So reviewing this type of appeal um, process is not all that they're, they're focused on. Hey, Questions? I going to bite my tongue because if I open my I'm going to I wouldn't regret except that I, just to echo a little bit uh, what you've heard in the past this is the most incredible injustice to this community to the Victor Valley to the job creations and even to the intent of the EB-5 program that, the, that you could have possibly done the problems 
have nothing to do with our application, our center, or anything else, or anything being uh, dishonest or an improper in any way at all. Uh, Keith, you and your staff have done an incredible amount of work and time. Uh, that work and time, even if the application tomorrow were to say you're good to go, it, the injustice and the financial hit on this city uh, and this valley, the Victor Valley, all 400,000 people, that EB-5, uh, really everybody benefits from that, is incredible. Um, uh, we're doing exactly what the EB-5 program was intended for, uh, to get foreign investors that have an interest in investing in this country and creating jobs, and that's all we've done. And there hasn't been one shred of evidence or anything to suggest that there's any rational reason why they should have taken this course and taken this long. Uh, now we sit here at the mercy of, of, of the federal bureaucracy that is totally insensitive to that, and I'm hoping that uh, our Congress people uh, will get uh, more directly involved in this thing and uh, they have their limitations, too, when it comes embedded in within the bureaucracy. It's one thing to have Congress and presidents and everybody beaten up on it. It's another thing to deal with people down in second and third and fourth levels that have a whole career built into that process to even touch them when they are malfeasant. But, uh, oops, I said the word malfeasant. That's, I, didn't want to, I didn't mean to say that. I take that back. All right, I'm done. What's the, Keith, one, one question. What, what's the process to, uh, to reimburse the funds? What, how, um, there must be a check and balance to make sure it ends up with the applicant, with the original applicant. Uh, that is correct. Uh, we start the process with an initial request. Um, and uh, so long as that the initial request is consistent with uh, council's policy uh, to reimburse, we bring it forward for your consideration before we take anything uh, uh, further in terms of actual cutting of check, we seek your approval first. Uh, usually it's in the form of a settlement agreement. Um, and the traditional settlement agreement we have is to repay them, the investors, uh, the principal amount, which is the $500,000. And um, we've, in the settlement agreements, obtained uh, waivers of um, interest accrued uh, against, uh, the, against those principal amounts. To answer your question with respect to how the individuals get their money back, uh, consistent with how we structured uh, the original repayment uh, of the loans uh, as, as, uh, as the repayment of loans to the limited partnership, we actually cut a check jointly to both the individual investor and the, um, the Victorville Regional Center partnership so that they're forced to have to endorse the, the, the check uh, collectively to make sure that um, uh, the individuals get the money back. Because we have a contractual relationship as the airport authority with the actual company, the, the limited partnership, they have to be um, uh, identified on the, uh, on the check, but to make sure and safeguard the individuals, we put them as, as um, post signatures. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cavriales for asking uh, for this update, and I appreciate you providing that update to us. Um, obviously, we'll continue to wait, but um, I'm hopeful for a positive outcome. I think this program has merit. I think it, it would be beneficial to not just Victorville, but the citizens of the Victor Valley uh, into the future, and so I'm hopeful that we uh, get a positive response uh, from the USCIS and we can continue to move forward. Uh, I do agree uh, this length of time it has taken uh, is somewhat problematic, and um, I'm hopeful uh, that they come out with a, a positive conclusion, uh, that uh, they allow us to move forward. Uh, but even if they do or they don't, regardless, this amount of time that it's taken is, uh, is very problematic uh, for the city because we're somewhat held in limbo. We don't know what we need to do. We have some big decisions we need to make, and um, you know, waiting on the USCIS to make their decision uh, becomes a problem for us. So I'm hopeful that they'll make their decision one way or the other uh, very quickly. So thank you for your update. I agree. And the minute we do learn something, we'll share it with, uh, with you. Right. Thank you. All right, uh, now we'll move to the Victorville Water District, uh, agenda item number 10, public hearing called to hear arguments for or against initiating proceedings to collect standby and avail availability fees. Uh, we have uh, two resolutions before us. This is a public hearing. 
Uh, I do have a card. I'll open the public hearing on agenda item number 10, Dorothy Miller. Thank you, Mayor and Council of People. We have a thing going on. We pay a standby fee. We've paid it for years. And I don't know how we're going to join everything together when some pay something, somebody don't pay something, and we're hooking things together. And I don't know for sure if everybody is paying their full share. Uh, we have the treatment plant. <coughs> We've taken some lines and hooked it into the treatment plant. Now, are those people paying for it? They're not Baldy Mesa people. I feel Baldy Mesa has been taken. They've taken all their money, the city has, and we pay and we pay and we pay. And I know several of you were in Baldy Mesa. There is places in that area that is not paying a standby fee. And I, I just really think that the Baldy Mesa was taken, and I really think we need to do something about that. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other cards on this public hearing. But we have two resolutions before the Victorville Water District Board for your consideration. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing if there's no one else wishing to speak. Anyone else? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Return it to the board. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriella, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Baez absent. Agenda item number 11, again under the Victorville Water District, is a public hearing called to hear arguments for and against revising and consolidating rules and regulations for the Water District as set forth in the introduction of Ordinance VWD-004. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll have you do that. Um, but I will go ahead and open the public hearing on agenda item number 11. Dorothy Miller, I know you want to speak on that one as well. Well, this is the same thing over again. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see everybody treated exactly the same. We all pay the same. Uh, I don't know how you do your billing because it makes it very hard when you do charging for something for one district, don't charge it for the next district, you charge it for this district, and it bothers me. We need to get things together. We need to, if it's going to, the city's got it, the city should take responsibility and handle the whole thing, and everybody should be treated fairly. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the Water District Board of Directors on agenda item number 11? You know when I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, yeah. Council, just for information on the second page of the, for, under the discussion sub, uh, submitted by Sean McGlade, please note the proposed ordinance does not authorize or recommend any changes to the fees currently being charged by the district for water. There was a question that I kind of had as whether or not this was raising the fees and why. It does not affect the fees in any way, shape, or form. Thank you. I'll ask for a reading of the ordinance. An ordinance of the Board of Directors of the Victorville Water District, superseding and repealing Victor Valley Water District Ordinance Number A-1204 and Baldy Mesa Water District Ordinance Number 1995-8, for the purposes of revising and consolidating the rules and regulations of the former individual water districts to apply uniformly to the district, adopting and facilitating future adoption of unified procedures for the administration, billing, and collection of the rates, fees, and charges associated with water services provided by the district, and implementing enabling provisions related to water account, administrative charges, and liens Wait for further reading. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriales, second by Councilmember Rothschild. Uh, 
Motion carries for introduction with Council Members Kennedy and Baez absent. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number 12, which is underneath the City Council. This is a public hearing regarding Code Amendment PLN 10-00027, request for continuance to June 7, 2011 meeting. I will open the public hearing on agenda item number 12. Anyone wishing to address the Council at this time? All right, seeing no one, we will go ahead and continue agenda item number 12 to June 7, 2011. Moving on to agenda item number 13. This is a public hearing called to receive citizen and agency comments regarding the draft fiscal year 2011-2012 annual action plan and to adopt the HCD grants review committee recommendations, three approve and adopt the plan as presented for the submittal to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and four authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents for submittal to HUD. And McEachern, I believe you conflict out on this, therefore yeah. we cannot even open the public hearing at this point since we will not have a quorum. And I believe staff, the city clerk, can continue this item to the next regular meeting. Okay, so we won't even open the public hearing on agenda item number 13 uh, due to my conflict and not having a quorum. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number 14, the consent calendar. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriala, second by Council Member Rothschild. Mayor Pro Tem Cabriala, may I get a vote from you? Thank you. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Baez absent. Then item number 15 is request to approve the SCLA and electrical system capacity upgrade of 9 megawatt interruptible power in the amount of $327,240. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriella, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Vias absent. Agenda item number 16 is request to receive and file the quarterly financial status report as of March 31st, 2011. Robertson, is there a reason that this is being presented under written communications as opposed to consent calendar? Uh, in the past, it had been on consent, as you indicate. Uh, Council Member Kennedy requested that it uh, be changed to a written uh, item instead. Unfortunately, he's not here to discuss whatever it was that he wanted to discuss. So we'll have to wait uh, for his comments for the next one, I suppose. Well, if it needs to come back, then uh, perhaps he'll ask that it be re-agendized. But I'm uh, just curious as to why that was on there. So, All right. So it's before the council for approval. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriella, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Vias absent. Agenda item number 17 is request to approve uh, my appointment to the Community Services Advisory Committee. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cabriella, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Vias absent. And item number 18 is request to authorize uh, my sending a letter of inquiry to Best Best and Krieger regarding legal services being provided to Council Member Baez. Hi. Mr. Mayor, I asked for this, uh, and um, the reason is that Best Best and Krieger represents us in personnel issues as well. So um, we need a, cl a clarification. We need a signature on a piece of paper indicating uh, what role, if any, they have in advising uh, uh, Council Member Vias? I'd move the I'd move the motion. Motion by Council Member Rothschild, second by Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales. Ms. 
Cabrales, may I get a vote from you? Thank you. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Baez absent. Agenda item number 19 is a request to approve the Council Policy CP 11-04 regarding interfund loans. Uh, either our City Manager or Deputy City Manager, if you could address this issue. We do have a request from one of our Council Members to continue this, but I think the Council should have the opportunity to discuss it this evening. This issue was first uh, brought to our attention at the, I believe, the March 15th meeting uh, with a request from Councilmember Baez uh, to, for the city to adopt such a policy. Um, at the first meeting in April, um, I believe it was April 7th, uh, she inquired again as to why it was not on the agenda. At that time, I indicated that uh, it was, I just reviewed the final draft and that it was written up as an administrative policy. Um, and that uh, I expected Mr. Cox to sign it later that week and that we would submit a copy of the policy to the entire council uh, once it was signed. Um, there seemed to be no opposition at that time. However, since then, she has indicated uh, a request to have this come back to the city council. So it was uh, scheduled for tonight's agenda. And uh, as I understand it, uh, she's raised a question about the constitutionality of interfund borrowing in, in general, or at least about the policy not entirely sure, um, and uh, once I've had a chance to review the, the memorandum as well as the law, I suspect that we'll probably have to get the city attorney involved to discuss the constitutionality of interfund borrowing. Okay, well, we have a request to approve a council policy before us. Um, is this in contrary to what other cities do, other special districts? Could you or our city attorney speak to that? Because um, we did receive a memo late this afternoon that was quote-unquote confidential, but it went to the entire city council, which makes it absolutely unconfidential. I, I would like our city attorney to speak to that, uh, requesting that we put this item off, which I'm willing to bring up because she's asked for it, but it was under a confidential memorandum, which unfortunately can't be confidential because it went to the entire city council. So I'm unaware, public. Correct. I'm unaware of any privilege that would apply uh, to a confidential document that is submitted to the council. The policy here is that if it goes to one council member, it goes to all council members. If it's a document submitted to the council in the regular course of business, it becomes a public document. And can we speak to this interfund uh, policy that we're asked, we're being requested to approve tonight as respect to other cities, towns, special districts? Are we outside of our realm of constitutionality? Uh, Mr. Brandt, Council. The question of interfund borrowing and interfund policies has come up before. Uh, the auditors recommend that we formalize the interfund borrowing uh, in that uh, where the borrowing continues beyond the end of the fiscal year, that it be formalized with approval of the Council. That's generally done in a form of a resolution. We have been asked uh, to submit that to the City Council. We are going to submit that to the City Council. Uh, we've been trying to figure out what do we do with EB-5 if it's reinstated. That changed things. We've also been looking at uh, the, the agreements, the, uh, the potential sale or the agreements that we have in regard to the building of the uh, industrial wastewater plant. We've also been looking at whether or not we're going to proceed and with the construction of La Mesa and the Squally Interchange, and we believe we are, all of that changes, and we, what we would, our goal was to make sure that we get the final uh, borrowing put to the City Council so that every meeting we don't come back looking like we're amending it and we don't know what we're doing, because these figures are changing weekly, and we do believe with the reports that we're giving the Council that they are very aware from, of, of what has occurred. Um, Secondly, uh, what we're trying to do is there's a lot of the borrowing from funds, as the council is aware, uh, that wasn't formalized with the council's approval, although um, council may have been aware of those through reports given to the city council. And so we're having to back up for a number of years to see, you know, what, what do we need to, to um, fix so that the council understands what we're doing. Interfund borrowing has been uh, something that auditors now for, mm, I guess, about three or four years 
have been recommending uh, when there is a use of funds uh, that constitutes a borrowing, um, but I contacted the uh, city of Hesperia, the finance director of the city of Upper Valley, or the town of Upper Valley, excuse me, finance director, and uh, Hesperia's policy is in the resolution that adopts the various uh, city budgets, it simply gives the city manager the authority to borrow within the funds, but not borrow funds that haven't been budgeted or not anticipated. So he has the right uh, to use those funds uh, with a general entry, and then it's expected that if, the, if they are not paid back by June 30, that it becomes a formal investment or a formal borrowing. That is their policy. It's simply contained in the resolution. Apple Valley doesn't have any policy. The new finance director of Apple Valley submitted a one-sheet survey. I believe there were 10 plus cities. None had an interfund uh, borrowing policy. Uh, they're doing another survey. Another survey is being conducted even as we speak tonight in regard to what cities are doing because more and more auditors are recommending that we have a, an interfund policy. Uh, I think it's the next one, idea. Um, it ought to be a council policy and an administrative policy. It's generally taken care of under current legislation, I believe, but because there has been some lagging on submitting that to the city council to clarify what funds are being borrowed and what rate of interest and when it's to be paid back, um, it it should be formalized by the, by the city council. There are some, uh, a lot of misstatements and misinformation in regard to, to borrowing. Uh, it's a complicated issue. Uh, the constitutionality, I guess, has been challenged, which means this automatically goes to the city attorney or some attorney in regard to a legal opinion before I think that's a serious, serious uh, uh, challenge. And staff has no objections because it would not change uh, what we are doing uh, and what we are expecting to do. We understand very clearly from the City Council that their intent is that we will formalize the interfund loans in a resolution form and bring those back to the Council. We will do that with or without um, a policy. It has been recommended by the auditor. We're going to follow the recommendations of the auditor. Uh, but I believe this should be issued, submitted to the uh, City Attorney or a specialty attorney. Just please note on uh, the first page of that memo that, uh, quote, I'm attaching for your consideration a copy of a legal opinion issued uh, through the League of California Cities. And on the first page of the opinion, this publication is provided for general information only and is not offered as a, or intended as a legal advice. So, Mr. Cox, uh, uh, based upon that and uh, in your professional opinion as well as the deputy city manager, uh, the policy that we're being asked to adopt tonight does it allow you to do your job in a more professional manner and meet with the requirements of the uh, city auditors? I think it uh, complies with the recommendation of the city auditor. I don't think it changes uh, uh, any, it doesn't in itself correct anything that has happened in the past, and it doesn't change what our proposal is for the future, and that is to uh, uh, determine to the penny where the borrowing has occurred, formalize it in resolution, submit it to the city council for approval, uh, so that we read all the requirements that when the auditor comes in, we have complied with their recommendation and met the uh, met the law. All right, thank you. All right, with that, if there's no further questions, the items before the council. Have the uh, have the motion buttons. There you go. Approve approval of the uh, policy uh, CP one one dash zero four interfund loans. Motion by Councilmember Rothschild, second by Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales. Motion carries with Council Members Kennedy and Vias absent. All right, thank you. Now we're moving to Council Reports, uh, Agenda Item Number 20, Discussion of Possible Action Regarding Items for Upcoming City Council Agendas, and I'll start with Council Member Rothschild. I have none. I have had a number of pats in the back for our, our letter A, for our restaurant grading that will be in the windows. Uh, a number of people in the community have 
uh, said that's a very appreciative move by the city of Victorville to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that was a great, great thing to move forward. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Gary All right. I have uh, nothing at this time, so we'll move on to reports from council members. And the chairman, if I might, I do have an update um, uh, in connection with the red light camera issue. I think it's scheduled for the next meeting. I've had discussions with Bill Jensen, the uh, the leader of the Tea Party here locally, and uh, there's been an inability to get hold of Brandon Wood, their attorney, because he's been tied up in trial. Uh, Mr. Jensen is suggesting that we uh, postpone consideration of that item for 60 days. Uh, I believe the Tea Party is in support of that. It will give uh, Brandon Wood and myself a chance to look at the issues and see if there's any change in the law as it currently stands. Um, I'm completely uh, okay with that. I, I would only request that you communicate back with them that they put that request in writing to us if they haven't already done so, just so that we have something in writing that we're not putting this off versus them requesting us to do so. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Uh, report from council members. Council member Rocha. Just to remind you of uh, a simple animal, a bat, B-A-T, uh, best available technology. That's what this state was run on 20 years ago, 15 years ago and back. Now it's run under AB32 and, and all the other uh, global warming and environmental movements that are cutting and strangling the businesses in this country and in this state. Uh, so BAT is best available technology. That's what we, all the rules we had. Whatever biz, your best of pollution technology you have for your business, you use that and you can come in and do business. And now the state of California is using their uh, onerous hands on their environmental movements and killing businesses. It's hard for us to even attract a good company factory to come in here to SCLA. Uh, if they just had to use BAT, they'd be fine with it because they'll go out there and get the best that's in the world. Anti-pollution equipment, put it on their on their factory, and they're good to go. In California, that's not good enough for them. Uh, so just remember BAT whenever anybody says, well, what are the solutions the tree huggers have for our business and industries? It's what we used to use up until they got a stranglehold on this state. I would like to invite everyone out to uh, Saturday's uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration. It's a family celebration at Victor Valley College. It is an American celebration celebrating our Hispanic culture in the high desert. So I would invite everyone that uh, wants to come out and enjoy the food and the music and so on, entertainment all day long. Uh, please come out and enjoy an American holiday. Thank you. Uh, I do have some comments to add this evening, and uh, they're somewhat personal, emotional in nature. Uh, two nights ago, uh, I was down in Palm Desert at an insurance company conference, and uh, as you all probably got the news, I got the news that Osama bin Laden had been killed. And uh, what... What a great time for America. I mean, we got to celebrate that evening, and this country got to celebrate that evening. This world got to celebrate that evening. Probably like on un- un- uh, any other time in, in the history of this world. Um, someone who wanted to take the very freedom and liberty that we all enjoy in America away from us uh, was taken down, and rightfully so. Uh, it's unfortunate it took so long, but thank God it actually happened. Uh, but I think it speaks to the folks that have served this country and our military, served us and our military, defending those freedoms and those liberties that we so rightfully enjoy. And I sit up here on this dais with two men that have done just that. And any lack of respect for these two guys... This goes uncalled for. Well, and, and as well as our city manager, I apologize. Well, I'm I'm referencing our elected, but you too as well, Jim. Um, my grandfather uh, flew P-51s over Germany in, in World War II. Was shot down. He was a prisoner of war, um, and uh, but uh, survived that and came back. And uh, he's the reason I'm here today. So. Um, I just thank you all for your service to this country. Thank you. And with that, we are adjourned.